Greetings traders and welcome back to another survival guide. Chris here bringing you some more information to make sure that your trading brain continues to keep growing and you'll have all the information you need when you go to take the Gauntlet Mini. If you don't know what the Gauntlet Mini is, it's something that we offer here at Earn to Trade which can allow you the opportunity to become a professional funded trader in as minimum as 15 traded days. It is going to be an awesome opportunity for those of you that feel you have the skills but lack the monetary resources in order to achieve your trading goals. But let's continue on with what we're talking about here today. Today we're going to be discussing the energy futures world. We're going to talk about what energy futures are as well as some of the most commonly traded energy futures contracts out there to date. And at the end of all of this, we'll even include some tips to keep you on your highest level of success as you push forward into the energy futures markets. But without further ado, let's get going so we can cover that juicy material. Energy futures are among the most liquid and widely traded markets worldwide. Considering the rising global population and the natural increase in its energy demands as it rises, this field is poised to continue rising as we march into the future. Today, the energy futures market is more developed and diverse than ever before. It is considered to be a highly lucrative niche for many market participants as long as they are proficiently understanding the energy sector. We're going to talk about all of the different things behind what an energy futures contract is, so let's start there. Energy futures are derivatives contracts with energy products as the underlying asset. A market participant has the option to buy and sell these energy commodities through energy futures at a predetermined future price and date. The most popular types of energy futures are based on commodities like oil, natural gas, and electricity. Supply and demand are a prominent component of their price. However, unlike other commodities, they are a bit more sensitive to geopolitical events. Energy futures allow investors to speculate or ensure an efficient hedge against price fluctuations or external risk that may affect the underlying commodity. An example of this would be an investment firm with a significant portfolio of oil oil and gas stocks, they might want to hedge it by exposing itself to purchasing derivatives that would increase in value if the price of those other commodities declined. Other companies who trade energy futures include those who want to lock in prices beforehand to ensure optimal industrial production planning and smooth operational processes as they continue to march forward with their business. An example would be that if we were to suppose a company needed vast oil resources to power its production plant, in that case it might want to ensure the required amount at the best possible price of that oil way before the actual purchase occurs. That way, if the price of oil suddenly goes up during the year, the company will not suffer from any unexpected increase in its production costs. If we were to compare it to other commodities, energy futures have a relatively short history. They were first introduced in the 1970s out of the necessity to help control the price volatility in the underlying commodities and to add an additional risk management tool to the arsenal of traders, investors, and end users across the board. Over time, energy futures managed to become an integral part of the modern financial system due to their efficiency in keeping prices in check. Here we can take a look at some of the most popular to date energy contracts that are traded. We have crude oil as you might expect because oil is a very popular commodity indeed for its use in just about a ton of applications. We have that as a ticker symbol of CL in the contract unit of 1000 barrels. This is a very popular contract option once again where it is moving 0.01 per barrel and it's equivalent to $10 a tick. Then we have natural gas which is going to be ticker 
symbol NG, and we're going to be trading in 10,000 mm BTUs, and then we have 0.001 per mm BTU as our minimum price fluctuation, and once again, $10 per tick. Then finally, working our way down, we have ethanol. Ethanol is going to be EH, 29,000 gallons, 0.001 per gallon, which is $29 a tick on the higher end here, and as we work our way to coal, we have MTF, which is 1,000 metric tons per contract, and 0.05 is going to be the minimum price fluctuation, equivalent to $50. And then finally, we have RBOB, which is going to be RB, and this is 42,000 gallons per contract and a minimum price fluctuation of 0 0.0001 per gallon, which equates to $4.20 per tick. I'm sure most of us are aware that a derivative is a financial instrument that derives its value from the underlying asset. In the case of energy commodities, there can be natural gas, crude oil, coal, etc., a lot like we just talked about. We can divide energy derivatives depending on where they trade at. The traditional exchange-traded energy derivatives include futures and options. Then we have more exotic categories of energy derivatives, which would be the OTC, that is the over-the-counter swaps and and forwards. Energy derivatives are popular among all types of market participants. They include large production companies, utilities, energy producers, energy retailers, trading houses, investment firms, asset managers, and other financial institutions. The extensive array of energy derivatives gives market participants a wide range of options to choose from, and that is very appealing to us as traders because if we don't like what we're looking at, we can simply look elsewhere. With this chart here, we can see an example of what energy futures trading looks like versus other derivative options. We have futures on the left, forwards after that, followed by options, followed by swaps. With futures, it is a financial contract obligating the buyer and the seller to do something at a predetermined price and date in the future. It's pretty simple, and that's what most of us are familiar with. Then we go into forwards, which is an agreement between parties to buy and sell an underlying asset at a specified future date at an agreed-upon rate. Then we have options where a financial contract is given the right to the buyer or seller to get a predetermined price within a specified period of time. Then we have swaps, which is a contract upon the parties agreed to exchange cash flows on a future date. A floating market price is exchanged for a fixed price over a specified period of time. Now as far as most of us are concerned, Futures and options are really as far as our knowledge realistically needs to go if we are planning on being a retail trader or even those of us that are looking to get funded and become a funded trader, a professional trader, still futures and options will really be where we're looking to trade. We're looking to trade here specifically because these are things that are done on exchanges. Both futures and options, ignore my terrible circles, are done on exchanges, whereas swaps are OTC and forwards are privately negotiated, and that is just a lot more problematic when we have things like futures and options available to us. Many traders are always asking, where are the most liquid markets? Well, in the case of energy futures, let's talk about the most traded energy futures, because if we're aware of this, it will allow us to find those markets that have the highest probability of liquidity at the time that we go to execute. The first is going to be everyone's expectation, and that is just crude oil. Crude oil is the king of all commodities. It is present in many aspects of our everyday lives. The plastic on your mobile phone, the detergent in your bathroom, the fuel in your car, the makeup and cosmetics that your wife might be using, it's everywhere. The commodity is always in high demand due to how essential oil is, which always tends to benefit its price. The crude oil futures contract, CL, as we talked about before, is the fourth most traded futures instrument worldwide. The list with the top five most traded futures on the CME is the sole commodity among the group of futures. It is important to understand that despite crude oil's intense popularity, it isn't just a uniform product. There are different types of crude oil depending on the raw material's specific characteristics, including sulfur content and the field of origin and even gravity. That's why there are crude oil futures contracts with different names, including Brent, West, Texas Intermediate, Edmonton Light Sweet, Hardesty Western Canadian, and the list just goes on and on. CL, though, is the most common contract that you'll most likely encounter.
Then we have natural gas. And natural gas is considered a domestic commodity for the US market and has been for some time. The majority of the traded instrument's price depends on the production results and the development of local sites. Among the states leading the production of natural gas in the US, we have Texas, Alaska, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, and Louisiana. The evaluation of the commodity is based on distinguishing characteristics like the volume and heating demands. Usually, natural gas remains in the list of the top 10 most actively traded futures on the CME throughout the entire year. However, its demand does tend to peak during the winter months, naturally when those heating demands are at their highest. Next, we have the reformulated gasoline blend stock, which is for oxygen blending. If you've never heard of RBOB for short, you'll be surprised to find out that it is the third most widely traded energy futures contract in existence. RBOB is a refined crude oil product that is mainly used for ethanol transportation. Its prices are positively correlated with those of crude oil. The reason for its popularity is rooted in the link with crude oil. The RBOB product is is imported when crude oil producers don't have the means to refine gasoline and want an alternative. RBOB is considered the most essential refined byproduct of crude oil. And RBOB futures are a useful tool to express views on crude oil, weather, consumer behavior, and regulatory action in terms of current and future energy consumption from the investor's perspective. Next, we have coal, and coal is the primary energy source that we have been using for most of our history, including heat generation, transportation, and just so many other options here. As we are approaching the end of the fossil fuel era, this is poised to change, however, and while crude oil will continue to be present in our everyday lives under different forms, coal will probably make way for alternative energy sources. Considering its limited use for purposes outside of just energy generation, many analysts predict that coal will be phased out eventually in the long term. And finally, we have biofuels. Humanity's march towards renewable energy makes biofuels a prevalent investment opportunity for most. The most popular futures contracts in the biofuels category are based on ethanol as the underlying commodity. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that can be made from various plants. The raw material for its production is known as biomass. When blended with gasoline, ethanol can increase octane and cut down on carbon monoxide. The result is cleaner energy that doesn't cause smog emissions and isn't harmful to the environment. There are disputes, however, on whether biofuels should really be considered clean energy because they're not completely harmless, and as such, we should be aware that they may not always be around as we march toward a renewable future. If you've made it this far into the video, you deserve some tips as to how to really navigate the energy futures markets. And if we're looking at supply and demand as our first tip, let's understand why this is important. At the core, supply and demand is going to drive the price of everything on an economical scale. It's important to understand the supply and demand of whether it's crude oil or coal, and understand that when there's a shortage in supply, there may be an increase in demand as there are those not getting their supply and vice versa. So as we watch the products that we're interested in trading, let's pay attention to that supply and demand chain because if anything is interrupted or changed for positive or negative reasons, we can expect that to affect the price of whatever it is we're trading. Then we have the seasonality factor. This is a very important tip. There are energy impactors that are changing throughout the year with a degree of predictableness behind them. What I mean is if we look at heating oil, for example, the consumption goes up strongly during the winter months in the Northeast. This is due to heating oil being used for homes in order to heat themselves. This is an easy example of how we can pay attention and be ready for prices to rise as the demand increases, or as the demand decreases when we work our way into summer, perhaps we can be prepared for them to fall. Then we have the geopolitical situation. This is important to pay attention to, and this just simply means paying attention to the geopolitical situation of the globe as a whole. As rules and different political figures adjust rules behind what type of energy is allowed to be implemented, or if there's restrictions or taxes being imposed upon a on crude oil, for example, being 
brought into the United States. These are all things that can heavily impact the cost of a particular product or a particular commodity in this case, because if we have people being charged more for something, chances are they're not going to be as interested in buying it. Then we have the build and drawdown cycle. The build and drawdown cycle is really going to be something akin to supply and demand. There are going to be these build phases that include the extraction of raw material from the ground with things like crude oil and its transportation and storage to the special facilities. And then the drawdown phase is going to be representative of the cycle when the product is delivered to the end user. So it's important to understand with whatever it is that we're trading that there are these build and drawdown cycles and the build and drawdown cycles means that the product isn't just immediately found and is perfectly refined from the moment that it's generated and by paying attention to these cycles we'll get an idea of the supply and demand scenarios that are coming up in the future then we have the market dynamics which is the current state and forecast this is pretty simple this is going to come down to paying attention to your technical and fundamental analysis and paying attention to what those respected advisors are saying about a particular commodity because all of these things do factor into whether or not people will be bullish or bearish on whatever it is that we are trading. In conclusion, energy futures is another very viable trading option for those of us as retail traders or professional traders for that matter, due to the inherent need for energy as the population continues to grow. As the population grows, the energy demand is there. And as such, even if the products of what we're looking at, maybe it's crude oil or coal, even if those go away, they will be replaced by another source of some type of energy. So so energy is here to stay. I strongly encourage checking it out. But until next time, folks, please do me a favor and click the like and subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date with any educational content that we come out with. Happy luck in the markets. That sounds interesting. Good luck in the markets out there, folks. I will see you soon. Bzzz.